Today I want to talk about spirituality and honestly it's probably my favorite topic, subject of all time. It's the most influential force in my life and there's no way in hell that I could possibly cover everything. I'm going to leave out so much but I'll just tell you my experiences with it. So, so spirituality, jeez. I would say that my first run-in with it was uh, maybe around 25 when I took it seriously um, and I was looking for self-help material to be honest so it's so funny because I remember the first time that uh, <laughs> you hear things like there's no such thing as good and evil you know duality you get introduced to duality um, oneness like everything's connected that's uh, it's pretty far-fetched right and to think that you could place yourself, oh, how about this little speech, uh, letting go and just trusting in the universe. I mistook that statement in particular for like non-action or something, but uh, overall I'm just trying to say that a lot of these ideas seem really far-fetched and while some things stuck with me and were useful to me, um, those bigger ideas or teachings I kind of just let it sit for a while, honestly. Um, I wanted to inhabit some of these bigger ideas and adopt them, but uh, it just wasn't all there mentally, or you could say I wasn't prepared. So, so little by little, you know, things are starting to click, but I'm just going to have to fast forward to the most memorable stuff, which is Jiddu Krishnamurti, for sure, one of my favorite... Uh, people so what he taught me more than anything was about identity yeah so <laughs> this whole time you know I'm thinking to myself hi I'm Anthony I'm Filipino I, I'm a rock music kind of person I personally I don't have views on politics race religion like just those things I get scared of because of political politically correct culture, if you will. So, and I never really attached to sports teams too much either, so. But anyway, identity, and I'm thinking like, okay, so what? Like, what What am I then if I'm not, it's not that I'm not human and you know, you're telling me some crazy stuff like, you know, this car is only a car because you call it such. It kind of put a twist on language and how I used it, but anyway, it was the first time that I really was starting to feel like I could inhabit that mindset and maybe give some more leeway to the soul, the dimension of the soul. And within the dimension of the soul, which is to say, outside of your mind, outside of your body, that third level of consciousness, if you will, all of a sudden, that's where everyone's connected, and that's where there's a place of no judgment. That's a place where maybe world peace, you can kind of like put that forward. Just those bigger ideas. Um, what else did he teach me? There was another thing that he said like, um, you know, everything is perfect as it is. And that one I really had trouble with because I couldn't help but think that, at least to my understanding, I mean, I don't know, something like murder. There's just like very definite things that are good and evil. So to step outside of that was very hard for me to think that everything's perfect. Um, and again, going back to this idea of kind of like letting go and just letting things happen as they are, it still didn't make sense to me because yeah, moving on from him. So to go back, it was about identity, attachment, and a little bit more about inhabiting the dimension of the soul the eternal part, the undying part. And then the next person was uh, Alan Watts. Oh, I think he's my all-time favorite because he mixes, uh, he covers spirituality, religion, history. I think he knows a thing or two about politics. He's very well-rounded, so anyway, what he taught me more than anything was to, to truly, like, escape duality. Like, fuck this game. Who said you have to play this game? So, for example, um, you can say something that, like, you know, a person with a million dollars, how about 10 million? 
you're not exactly wealthy. I uh, would have to say something that like true wealth is when you are fulfilled inside and you're genuinely happy, you know, and stuff like that. So <laughs> to be honest, uh, Alan Watts, he kind of pulled me away from my religious belief in God. Um, it's still there, but he kind of pulled me. He almost got me out of it, to be honest. Uh, when you tie that in with Krishnamurti introducing me to the idea that everything's perfect and that duality is no such thing, you know, like who, identification, if you will, to say that this is good, this is bad, this is wrong, this is right. Identification, giving names, giving terms, giving definitions to things. And um, I'll say it is kind of strange that for what it's worth, you know, everybody's so different. Mm, on a genetic level, uh, culture, um, I started to dis, dis, uh, disassociate with a lot of the things that meant so much to me. Um, yep, and that's that. So the next one is the one I'm on right now. Right now I'm moving on to another fellow, Sadhguru, I believe is how it's pronounced. So he's actually saying a lot of things that are helping me stay outside of this, um, duality if you will and uh i actually f i skipped over a part i wanted to talk about this movie i just recently saw it's called becoming nobody ramdas <laughs> i don't know how but my whole life i've been afraid to die for reals like just straight up and to my shock by the end of that movie like it was the last 15 minutes i legitimately I just wasn't afraid to die anymore, uh, and I would encourage you to watch the movie. Yeah, fuck it, whatever. I'm going to move on to a few examples of how I'm putting these things into practice. So one thing is uh, spiritual teachings taught me that like, I, I don't have control. I, I should say that too. Who was I to think? Like, of course, hey, I hope this doesn't come out wrong, but I'm everybody wishes that people they care about live a long life, a fulfilling life, um, all I'm saying is that I don't have control over that and the way things play out. And to be honest, I don't even know when I'm going to die. So am I so concerned with, uh, things that I need to get accomplished? I mean, what means more, you know, um, whatever, money, buy a house, start a family. That's, that's cool. That's nice stuff. But again, from a spiritual point of view, it's almost like, and this is what Sadhguru taught me actually, it's like, okay, fine, you get all these things that you want, and then what? You're going to seek more, whether it's a different job, more money, different uh, materialistic needs, uh, it, it could go on forever, and I'm not even saying what's bad or what's good, you know? Um, I'm going to skip over again to another random example. One of the f best things I ever learned in my entire life was that, and I learned this from Ram Dass in Becoming Nobody. So basically what we're doing is we are operating on in two dimensions at the same time. Another thing that these spiritual teachers teach is observation to see things and, you know, really not just get involved too much. But anyways, so there is the spiritual self. And in within the spiritual self, there's things that, like, for example, an undying energy, infinite potential. You know, like, when your body leaves this earth, you're going to be the spirit. This, this is the thing that they're talking about. And it's the entity that stands outside of the physical realm, which is mind and body, it stands outside of that, um, yeah, stuff like that, basically far-fetched ideas that are kind of hard to get a grasp on, so, yeah, I could say all these things, but, you know, anyway, the other side is the human self, which is to say, I'm Anthony, I'm American, I like rock music, uh, I'm Filipino, I, just stuff like that, you know, and, uh, in, within here is also, you know, my own perspective of the world, maybe from a psychology standpoint, my beliefs, my morals, how I operate, basically everything of the mind, you know what I mean? So before what has happened is I've spent so much time on spirituality, and this is a mistake that I made, by the way. Um, I spent so many years seeking peace and goodness only. 
which is to say I was trying to operate from extreme ideas that were really hard for me to implement or to to keep up you know anyways in the movie let me close this off he said that and I love it he said that what we're doing is we're operating on both at the same time and that uh you know, sometimes we'll bounce into here, we'll bounce into there, and we're just, you know, going back and forth between the two roles. Man, that really changed my life. It saved me so much trouble. It saved me a lot of trouble because, you know, for example, world peace is a big idea. And every time I look, turn on the news, and I've been spending a lot of time reading YouTube and Facebook comments. There's uh, so many are evil, and I'm not saying those people are bad, I'm just saying there's a lot of bad stuff. It's really hard to believe in in world peace and stuff like that, you know? And I used to beat myself up, honestly, that I couldn't uphold these ideals. And it's very frustrating. But Ramdas basically <laughs> saved my life. <laughs> and I don't beat myself up anymore. And here's another random spiritual fact. Like, yeah, okay, Sadhguru says, you know, there's no such thing as good or bad. It's just you're either... You're either happy or you're miserable. Anyways, I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna randomly skip by. So, in regards to my girlfriend dying, you know, I just accept it. There's another one, acceptance. You just accept things for the way that they are, you know? And well, let's talk about non-judgment. You know, before I used to say all the time, like, this person is, uh, in my mind, or sometimes in public, whatever, to friends, actually, I'm not a bad person. I used to say, like, this person's dead wrong. They think they're right, but they're wrong. And then well, you simply got to ask yourself, like, who the fuck are you to say? So what I want to say now is this: there's this new freaking mode of being that I want to, to adopt. And it's basically shut the fuck up. From my point, I'm not telling anyone else. If I want to operate r truly from a place of non-judgment, why don't I just shut the fuck up and accept everything for what it is? But here's the thing. Here's something crazy. Huh? How about this? Uh, it's easy to say, you know, don't judge good people, right? But who's to say? So what I'm saying is that's pretty extreme. Is I appreciate the duality of everything. That is to say the good and the bad. I accept the duality as a whole. And this is another thing about letting go and just letting things happen. Like whatever natural inclinations that I have to do with myself in this life. I don't question it anymore. I don't second guess it anymore. I just have faith, uh, whether it's, and I'll add some human stuff, uh, faith in my intuition, faith in my soul's desires, its will, and then the rest, the genetics too, like naturally, what, <laughs> of my genetic makeup, of what I, in my mind, you know, I'll put it all together. And so that's what I'm trying to say more than anything is, uh, I accept duality as a whole, mind, body, spirit, everything. It's it's okay. It's all okay. Like whatever. And as I said, what's uh, as I'm saying that I accept everything. I can't go on in my daily life like that. Obviously. So this is where Ram Dass saved my life. Like okay, cool. So you feel this way. Well, you're just gonna inhabit this part, and uh, you just gotta make things happen. Here's another statement that uh, life is either a comedy. Or a drama. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, after watching that Ramdas movie, I'm just like, damn. Well, it's kind of like a comedy. <laughs> See, so what I mean is drama, right? <laughs> Where does drama come from? Seriously, it's when you take shit too fucking seriously. It's when you attach too much to certain things. You know, whether it's uh, race, politics, religion. Or just anything else you strongly believe in. It's just... <laughs> um, attachment. Uh, I am this. So I can't do that. Oh, you know what? I can't... I believe in this. So I can't be your friend. Like, no, that's... Not only is that judgment, but that seems like control to me. Or a statement that... Uh, hey, if you're not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I don't want to talk shit about anybody else, but for myself, if I were to say such stuff, and I, again, I'm an imperfect human being, I'm flawed, yeah, I will honestly, 
suggest stuff, preach stuff. I'll, I'll make that mistake, but for what it's worth, I, I wish I couldn't. Um, the spirituality stuff, geez, it's like a life's work. It'll take forever to get to that point. But uh, anyway, um, strong attachments. It's ironic that I believe that now, I mean, based on my observations, strong attachments actually lead to separation. <laughs> I, mean, I, I saw a friend recently on social media. She made a statement about some stuff that's going on in 2020. And she lost, like, friends that she's known for years. I was talking to someone else. They lost followers, too, because they're not addressing what's going on right now in 2020. Um, I've seen, you know, just you know, little things here and there, like, if you like a sports team, you know, you start talking shit to the other, whether it's your friends, strangers, I've heard of fights break out at these little tailgate parties, and I'm not judging, I'm just, this is my observation, They're little things like that, you know, separation, I mean, attachment leading to separation, what a funny thing, so, if, if I, if I ever get defined as bad, evil and so on and so forth before I used to take offense I used to take offense I used to rush to defend myself but what does that really mean what the fuck does that really mean if I make an attempt to defend myself what does that mean it means that I'm gonna explain myself where I'm coming from and guess what I'm gonna press that idea onto you that's that's the way I see it I'm gonna place my ideas into your head so that it's acceptable to you I'll let you understand it but from a spiritual standpoint, acceptance and just letting things happen and there's no such thing as good or bad, like, fine, keep... You know what? I, I love you. I believe that you're perfect as you are. And I accept it. That's all there is to it. So that's a statement from the spiritual self. Mind you, my imperfect self is probably going to... Of course, I'm going to feel it, like feel angry or feel a certain type of way, you know? And I wish... Sometimes, yeah, I do wish that I could control how people see me, what they think about me, like, uh, I, the word is what, reputation? But again, like, think about it, really think about it. It's not that, it's not so much that do you really give a fuck about, you know, those people, like, you can, but what I'm saying is, you don't have to explain yourself, you don't have to, for what? It's crazy, because even when you do, like... Based on identification, like, hey, look, this is where I'm coming from. This is what I am. And you try to explain yourself. Yeah, and if the other person is strongly attached to their ideals and they, you know, they are opposing or they conflict, like, there's nothing you can do. I'm in a really crazy place right now that is very hard to explain. But uh, long story short, a lot of the spiritual stuff is starting to finally click after a lot of years, after roughly eight years some of these extreme ideals are really starting to click and it's fucking crazy. <laughs> I literally can't put it into words. Like, I feel like I've been unplugged from the matrix. I feel like I am bound at some point to this earth and identification, Anthony's identity. But on the other hand, I... <laughs> it's crazy. I'm in positions in public... Uh, I guess I have to say it, in the workplace where uh, people just straight up cuss me out, call me a motherfucker, you know, blind hate, if you will, so I take it pretty good, you know, for me, I feel like it's an exercise of patience, but uh, again, Sadhguru mentioned this also, um, he said that he gives, he's the only person to give himself the privilege to <laughs> basically lose his shit. He said that uh, the moment that another person can uh, control the way that you feel, mm, that's basically slavery. And I was like, wow, that's very powerful. Very powerful. And this relates to psychology or down-to-earth ways of thinking. Like, you have control over everything. Well, here, I mean, you know what I mean? It's up to you how you perceive it. You can let it get to you and you can't. But um, the way that I look at the world now is uh, it's mainly from a place of observation. Yeah, I judge from my e egoic mind, but for the most part, 
it's scary to say, but I, like I said, I appreciate good, but I appreciate evil too. I've got nothing against it because, uh, from a down to earth perspective, you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know if they have like a mental deficiency. You don't know the full explanation. And then even if you did, you could still choose to go against it. But again, I'm in search of peace. And, uh, I feel like another crazy statement is that I, uh, I feel like duality, yeah, I feel like I'm somewhere outside of it at this point. It's very hard to explain, but it feels great. Like I can go in duality, good and bad, I did, and I can step out of it if I have to. It's really helped me stay calm in situations where... So yeah, before, without all spirituality, like I would get very emotional, I'd get angry a lot, I would want to control other people, I would get jealous, uh, would be a hater... Like, uh, there was a lot of bad qualities, according to my definition, that I don't have them anymore. It's fucking amazing. So, yeah, I suppose that's it.